Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our free video lesson. This is actually part one of um, introduction to virtual assistants. So uh, why, why are we doing this? You, may, you might be asking. We understand the need for um, right information, especially for aspiring virtual assistants or those who don't have any experience when it comes to um, virtual assistants. It is our goal for you to be empowered by at least understanding the basics. And uh, we noticed that uh, there were a lot of people asking about how to become a virtual assistant, how to start um, virtual assistants. Um, I want to become a virtual assistant, but I don't know where to start or how to start. So um, in our own little way, we want to share uh, this lesson. This is actually free. You can actually share this to your friends, family, or whoever you know um, is interested to be a virtual assistant. So without further ado, uh, let's start. So welcome to Virtual Force Staffing Corp. Introduction to Virtual Assistants. Virtual Assistants Unleashed, Navigating Remote Work with Confidence and Skill. So what we will talk about. First, of course, we will talk about uh, what is a virtual assistant. And then uh, we'll talk about role and responsibilities of a virtual assistant. Also, um, skills and qualities of a, of a successful virtual assistant. And also setting up as a virtual assistant. On our next lesson, which will be part two, uh, we will discuss building an effective online presence, finding clients, communication and client relationship, time management and productivity, tools and software of a virtual assistant, of a virtual assistant rather, and also um, ethics and confidentiality. We will also um, discuss about continuous learning and professional development, scaling your virtual assistance business, case studies and success stories, and uh, also the, the question and answer session. So hello everyone. Again, um, my name is Dave Lynn and I'll be your presenter today. I'm the founder of Virtual Forest Staffing Corporation. Virtual Force is based in Canada, but we have developed a pool of vetted and tested virtual assistants from the Philippines. So a little, a little thing about us, um, our company was established this year, 2023. And uh, as an entrepreneur myself, I recognized the need for virtual assistants or what we call VAs, who could help with the growing demands of entrepreneurship hence the birth of Virtual Forest Staffing Corp. Our mission is to provide businesses with a reliable and talented virtual workforce that can help them grow and succeed. Our vision is to be the leading provider of virtual workforce solutions, helping businesses around the world achieve their goals. Our goal, of course, is um, to provide high quality assistance at an affordable price while helping our clients achieve their business goals. Um, but of course, this is not about us. Um, this is more about you or um, your learning path to become a, virtual, a successful virtual assistant. So, our training objective is by the end of the um, of this introductory uh, video session, participants who will ha will have gained a clear understanding of the core concepts of virtual assistance and remote work. They will be familiar with the definition of virtual assistance, its evolution over time and the concept of remote work along, its, along with its associated benefits. Through this informative video, participants will be prepared to explore further and consider the possibilities that virtual assistance offers as a um, flexible and dynamic career path. Why is this significant? Uh, why is this topic significant? Um, introduction to virtual assistance is a gateway to a flexible and growing career field that empowers individuals to work remotely, learn essential skills, and tap into global opportunities. 
In an era where remote work is increasingly prevalent, this introduction helps individuals diversify their career prospects, acquire valuable skills, and adapt to the, mo uh, to the modern work landscape. It fosters independence, entrepreneurial spirit, and professional growth, making it a relevant and future-proof choice for those looking to explore new horizons in their careers. And who is this for? Uh, this, this introductory video or this free lesson are for, of course, aspiring virtual assistants, individuals looking to start a career in virtual assistants can gain foundational knowledge to begin their journey. Also for career changers, um, those seeking a shift in their careers can explore the opportunities and skills offered by virtual assistants. So yung mga um, uh, dating, uh, I've been reading that they've been working um, as a BPO before, as call center agents. They want to, um, instead of going to, to the office, they want to switch career and become virtual assistant. So um, this, this, this lesson is for them too. Of course, freelancers. Freelancers in, var in various fields can learn about virtual assistants as an additional service or career path. Um, kung meron ka ng experience, like uh, you are a web designer, you've been doing graphic designing, um, as an additional or add-on um, service, you can do virtual assistant, uh, virtual assistants too. Of course, um, for small business owners, so uh, yung may mga may ari ng mga businesses, small businesses, or even big small uh, uh, big business owners, they can also uh, benefit from this lesson because um, they will know the importance of uh, having a virtual assistant, um, virtual assistant in their business. So entrepreneurs and small business owners can discover. Virtual assistants can help streamline their operations and reduce costs. Again, um, another is for remote workers. Professionals already working remotely can expand their skill set and consider virtual assistants as a supplementary income source. Also, business managers and HR professionals. Managers and HR personnel seeking to understand the role of virtual assistants and their organizations can benefit from this introduction. Hindi lang mga business owners. Ang mga business managers and HR professionals too um, can benefit from this lesson. They will realize uh, how important it is to um, have um, another another person in their team, which is um, virtual assistant, or anyone interested in remote work. Again, virtual assistant is, virtual assistant is more of um, remote work. So kahit sinong interesado na maging, um, or, or to um, explore the world of working remotely, uh, working from home, those individuals who are intrigued by the idea of remote work and digital economy can explore how virtual assistance fits into this evolving landscape. What are the training benefits? Um, what are the benefits of this uh, free video lesson? Of course, foundational knowledge. So um, this is the very core. Um, this will be your foundation. Kahit saan ka dalhin, um, if you if you decide to pursue a further career in virtual assistance, this uh, lesson can help you. Participants will acquire a solid grasp of the fundamental concepts of virtual assistance and remote work, providing them with a strong starting point for further exploration. And then um, industry insights. By understanding the evolution of virtual assistants, participants will gain valuable insights into the changing landscape of modern work and the growing demand for remote professionals. Um, another thing, another benefit is enhanced awareness. So knowledge is power. We, we always believe that having the right information can really lead you to the right path. So, Participants will develop a, clean, uh, a keen awareness of the benefits associated with remote work, such as increased flexibility, reduced commute, and access to a global network of clients and opportunities. 
informed decision making. Um, it's very important to have the right information, again, armed with a clear understanding of virtual assistance. Participants will be better equipped to make informed decisions about pursuing a career in this field and exploring specific niches or areas of interest. Should you decide to become a virtual assistant or not, um, this can help. Is this really for me? After this lesson, um, you, will, you will have a time to think by yourself, uh, para ba sa akin talaga to? Or um, should I pursue another career? Or virtual assistant? Or virtual assistant is really not for me. So, makakatulong sa inyo yun. Another is inspiration and motivation. The session will inspire participants by showcasing the potential of virtual assistants, motivating them to embark on a path that offers both personal fulfillment and professional growth. So topic number one, uh, again, what is virtual assistance? So we will define what virtual assistance is and how it has evolved. We will also explain the concept of remote work and its benefits. So the definition of virtual assistance is, um, it refers to the provision of administrative, technical, creative, or specialized support services to clients from a remote, uh, remote location. So, napakalawak ng virtual assistants. May kasama siyang administrative, technical, creative, and uh, specialized support services. Virtual assistants, often abbreviated as VAs, are independent professionals who use modern communication and collaboration tools to complete tasks and projects for businesses and individuals. These tasks can range from administrative work, such as scheduling appointments and managing emails, to more spe specialized tasks like social media management, graphic design, and content creation. So, um, pag-usapan naman natin ang evolution of virtual assistants. Paano nga ba nag-evolve ang virtual assistants from doing basic tasks like data entry and phone call management to doing um, more complex administrative tasks. The concept of virtual assistance has evolved significantly over the past few decades, primarily due to advancements in technology and changing work dynamics. Initially, virtual assistance was closely associated with secretarial and administrative tasks. However, with the rise of the internet, cloud computing, and digital communication tools, the scope of virtual assistance has expanded to cover a wide range of services. So, hindi lang, um, hindi lang mga basic tasks ngayon ang hinahawakan ng virtual assistants, but mostly, almost every task. Today, virtual assistants can provide support in various domains, including administrative tasks, like I mentioned earlier, um, Virtual assistants do scheduling, email management, travel arrangements, and more. Also, um, virtual assistants are also knowledgeable when it comes to marketing and social media, managing social media accounts, content creation, and also online marketing. Content creation, they also write blog posts, articles, newsletters, and other written content. Also, um, they're knowledgeable when it comes to graphic design and multimedia, creating graphics, videos, and other multimedia materials. Um, they can also be customer support or they can give customer service to handling customer inquiries, live chat, and support tickets. Website management, updating website content, performing maintenance, and basic design tasks. Also, they do research and data analysis, gathering information, market research, and data entry. Of course, um, e-commerce support uh, for online businesses or online shops, managing online stores, product listings, and order processing. What is the concept of remote work and benefits? Virtual assistance is closely tied to the concept of remote work where individuals can perform their job duties from a location outside of a traditional office setting. 
This arrangement offers several benefits for both virtual assistants and their clients. I think kung meron mang isang um, uh, attractive um, benefit of being a virtual assistant is the fact that um, you can do remote work. Most of your clients are overseas and with the power of internet and um, um, internet communication, you can um, communicate with your client via Zoom or um, so uh, physical location doesn't matter anymore. Um, being a virtual assistant will uh, will really give you this experience of um, of reaching out to different people and different clients from different parts of the world. So um, the concept of remote work is actually like one one of the concepts of remote work is flexibility. Virtual assistants can choose their work hours and location, allowing for a better work life balance. So isa to sa mga um, advantages of uh, being a virtual assistant. Also cost savings. Um, clients can save on overhead costs associated with hiring full-time employees such as office space and equipment. Um, one of the main reasons why clients or business owners, especially the startup or small businesses, they hire virtual assistants, um, of course, cost saving, cost saving opportunity para makatipid because um, uh, virtual assistants overseas, they charge less than uh, virtual assistants that are from their own country like Canada or US. Of course, um, access to global talent we have a lot of um, talented virtual assistants from the Philippines, from India, from all over around the world. So um, you basically have access to global talent. Clients can tap into a diverse pool of skilled professionals from around the world. Scalability. Virtual assistants can adapt to changing workloads, making it easier to scale up or down as needed. So um, part na rin ng pagiging flexible ng mga virtual assistants is um, kung halimbawa si client, um, she, requested, she requested just um, email management. But then again, um, nagkaroon ng need for social, man social media management too or also marketing. The, the fact that a virtual assistant can do both, magiging uh, scalable na ngayon ang business ni client. Kasi meron siyang maaasahan na virtual assistant. Next is reduced commute and environmental impact. Virtual work reduces the need for commuting, leading to less traffic congestion and a smaller carbon footprint. Increased productivity, virtual assistants often have more control over their work environment, which can lead to increased productivity. Roles and um, let's move on to roles and responsibilities of a virtual assistant. Virtual assistants are versatile professionals who provide remote work to remote support to businesses, entrepreneurs, and individuals. Their roles can encompass a wide range of tasks across various domains. Some of the key tasks and roles that virtual assistants can handle include administrative support. So um, we mention we always mention administrative support because um, I think this is the number one task that um, a business owner will um, will use virtual assistant for, or they will need virtual assistant for administrative support, like managing emails. Um, most of our clients are looking for administrative support, so they want someone who can manage their emails who can schedule appointments and organize their calendars. Also um, handling travel arrangements, personal VAs or personal virtual assistants do uh, travel arrangements, bookings and itineraries, data entry, document preparation and organization. Also um, communication management, virtual assistants are answering and making phone calls on behalf of clients they also draft, edit, and proofread emails, memos, and other correspondence. They also manage social media accounts, responding to messages and engaging with followers. 
Other responsibilities include um, content creation and management, writing blog posts, articles and website content, uh, designing graphics for social media posts, presentations, and marketing materials, curating and posting content on social media platforms. So, napakadami talaga. Um, customer support, like I mentioned earlier, um, virtual assistants also respond to customer inquiries and provide um, assistance via email or chat. They also address complaints, troubleshoot issues, and um, ensuring customer satisfaction. Managing customer feedback and reviews is also one of the main responsibilities of a virtual assistant. Project coordination. Um, virtual assistants can also be project manager, organizing and managing projects, including task delegation and timeline tracking, coordinating with team members, clients, and stakeholders to ensure project success, um, using project management tools to streamline workflows. Another is research and analysis. Virtual assistants are also involved in this task, conducting market research, gathering data, and analyzing trends, compiling research reports, summarizing findings, and presenting insights. Also, um, assisting clients with data-driven decision-making. And uh, wait, there's more. We also have uh, virtual assistants are also very techy. So technical assistance, providing basic IT support, troubleshooting, technical issues, and offering solutions. Assisting with software installations, updates, and maintenance also managing and maintaining websites and online platforms. And uh, again, also one of the most common uh, virtual assistant tasks is e-commerce and online business support. Virtual assistants uh, management online, online stores, adding product listings and processing orders, responding to customer inquiries related to products and services, handling inventory management, and order fulfillment. So what are the industries requiring virtual assistance? Ano nga ba yung mga businesses na nangangailangan mostly ng virtual assistance? And in the future, kapag naghanap kayo ng trabaho, ito yung mga businesses na um, pwede niyong hanapin na um, when you do your cold outreach, when you do email outreach, pag hinanap niyo sila sa Google, you can find these industries and you can ask if um, they will be in need your support or they will be in need of a virtual assistant like you. So industries requiring virtual assistance, virtual assistants are in demand across an array of industries, each with unique needs that virtual assistants can fulfill. Some examples of industries that rely on virtual assistance include entrepreneurship and small businesses. Again, ang mga small businesses, um, virtual assistants help entrepreneurs manage administrative tasks, customer support, social media, and business operations. Also, healthcare and wellness, mga spa, uh, massage, massage center, or um, so they also need virtual assistant. Virtual assistants support medical professionals with administrative tasks, appointment scheduling, patient communication, and billing. Marketing and communication. Businesses benefit from virtual assistants who manage social media accounts, even agency, even virtual assistant um, agency itself like us. Um, we do need virtual assistants too. So uh, creating content and assist with digital marketing strategies. E-commerce and retail, online store owners, they hire virtual assistants to handle product listings, customer inquiries, order processing and inventory management. Real estate, um, virtual assistants assist real estate agents with administrative tasks, property research, client communication, and appointment scheduling. So, napakarami nating client niyan. 
because um, they are very busy, especially mga real estate agents. They don't have time to do the mundane task or um, administrative task, so they can focus on more important things, which is uh, growing their sales and growing their business. Education and e-learning. Virtual assistants help educators manage online courses, mga, uh, mga teachers or professors. Um, student communication and curriculum development. Creative industries, artists, writers, and designers rely on virtual assistants for tasks such as scheduling, research, and promotional efforts. Of course, um, finance and consulting, financial professionals and consultants hire virtual assistants for data analysis research and client communication. Etong isa pa is nonprofit organization. Virtual assistants support nonprofit by managing donor uh, donor communication, event planning, and administrative tasks. Legal services. Um, virtual assistants assist law firms with legal research, document preparation, and administrative tasks. Technology and IT um, tech companies hire virtual assistants for technical support software management, and project coordination. Of course, uh, travel and hospitality. Virtual assistants assist with travel bookings, itinerary planning, and customer communication in the travel industry. At napakarami pa, we have fashion and beauty. So napakaraming businesses na pwede niyong i-reach out when it comes the time na ready na kayong mag-handle ng client. Another one is fashion and beauty. Virtual assistants support fashion and beauty professionals with administrative tasks, social media management, and customer communication. Coaching and consulting. Coaches and consultants hire virtual assistants to manage appointments, client communication, and administrative tasks. Manufacturing and supply chain. Virtual assistants assist with inventory management, order processing, and supplier coordination in manufacturing. So, um, napakaraming mga businesses na naghahanap talaga ng virtual assistants. So, um, just be persistent. Um, maghanap kayo ng maghanap ng client kasi hindi talaga nawawala ng client. So, yung mga businesses na binigay ko kanina, for sure, they are really in need of a virtual assistant. It's just a matter of um, someone reaching out to them and making them realize how important it is um, to, or what value you can bring to the table as a virtual assistant. So let's move on to qualities of a successful virtual assistant. So what are the qualities in, um, in essence? Uh, first is very important is communication skills, written and verbal. Time management and organizational skills. Problem solving and adaptability. Tech savviness and familiarity with various digital tools. Um, communication skills, verbal and written. Effective communication is the cornerstone of successful virtual assistants. Virtual assistants must excel in both written and verbal communication to convey information clearly, build rapport, and maintain strong client relationship. But don't get me wrong, hindi, ka, hindi kailangan na may accent ka or um, napaka-fluent mo sa English. As long as nako-communicate mo or naipaparating mo sa client ang ibig mong sabihin, um, I think that's that's a good quality communication or that's a good communication skills. Written communication. Virtual assistants should be adept at crafting professional emails, messages, and other written content. Clear and concise writing helps in conveying information accurately and ensures that instructions, updates, and client interactions are well understood. So, um, both written and communication, kailangan um, knowledgeable ang virtual assistant. Of course, uh, verbal communication, like I said, um, this is a very crucial skill for virtual assistants because you need to interact with clients and team members, like via video call, uh, phone calls, or voice messages. Good verbal communication helps in expressing ideas, addressing concerns, and providing information in real time. 
And uh, um, another important skill of a virtual assistant is time management and organizational skills. Effective time management and organizational skills are essential for virtual assistants to juggle multiple tasks, meet deadlines, and maintain productivity in a remote work setting. So remember, you are working alone. Wala kang boss na magsasabi sa'yo, it's time for you to take a break. It's time for you to, um, to finish the task. You're working alone and um, um, merong darating ang time na you have to, you will handle um, one or two or two or more clients. So you really have to be very organized. Kung kailangan mong uh, mag-color coding sa email mo, do that just for you to be organized or use um, time management tools, organizational tools that we will discuss further in this lesson. So how can you acquire the um, that skill? First is priori prioritization. Virtual assistants should be able to identify tasks based on urgency and importance. This skill allows them to allocate time and resources to tasks that have the greatest impact. And then uh, task management. Organizing tasks using tools like to-do lists, task managers, or project management software helps, in the, uh, helps virtual assistants stay on track and accomplish their responsibilities efficiently. So marami tayong tools na makakatulong sa inyo to, um, to manage your task and also uh, time blocking. Dividing work into dedicated time blocks for a specific task helps virtual assistant maintain focus and avoid overextending themselves. So um, one, one of the challenges when you're working remotely is um, knowing, the, knowing the difference between working and also um, um, being a mom or or doing the, the house chores. So sometimes, um, kahit hindi na natin time to do our task, ginagamit pa rin natin siya. So wala nang boundaries. So you have to do um, prioritization, task management, and time blocking. And uh, marami tayong courses about this one, about, uh, these, about this skill, and uh, we, will, we will dig further to that in the future. Problem solving and adaptability. Virtual assistants often encounter unexpected challenges in changing circumstances. Being a successful virtual assistant requires the ability to navigate these situations with agility. Um, like I said, you will be alone, working alone by yourself. You will have, there will be, there will come a time that you have to solve a problem on your own. Mostly, um, napakaswerte po if you have a very supportive client or if you have a support system. But most of the times, you have to solve problem on your own. You have to be very resourceful. You have to find, um, find ways how to solve your problem. Um, how to do that? By asking your colleagues, asking your mentor, asking your friends, or joining Facebook groups that you know can help you solve your problem. Also, um, problem solving. Virtual assistants need to analyze challenges, identify solutions, and take appropriate actions to resolve issues independently whenever possible, like I said earlier. Adaptability, the ability to adapt to new tools, technologies, tasks, and uh, client preferences is vital. Virtual assistants should be open to change and willing to learn and grow. So in your, in your uh, virtual assistant's um, journey, may mga clients na may encounter ka who will require you to try new tools because that's what, there's, that's what they use in their business. So wala kang choice kundi gamitin na yung tool na yan. So you have to be very adaptable. You have to uh, adapt to new tools and technologies. Tech savviness and familiarity with various digital tools. The virtual work environment relies heavily on digital tools and technologies. Virtual assistants must be comfortable with a range of software applications and platforms. Digital literacy, proficiency in using computers, email, internet browsers, and basic office, office software is fundamental. So um, 
whether we like it or not, we have to embrace digital world or digital literacy. This is really vital in your uh, virtual assistant world. If you don't know how to use computer, you have to learn. You have to really learn how to use computer. You have to learn how to send email. You have to learn how to browse the internet. And uh, you have to learn basic office software too. That's a must, whether you like it or not. Um, digital tools, familiarity with tools such as project management software like Trello, Asana, if you're not familiar with those tools, make sure to um, enroll in free courses or, um, or research about these um, um, common project management software. Communication tools such as Slack or Zoom and productivity apps such as Google Workspace or Microsoft Office is advantages. Learning agility. Virtual assistants should be open to learning new tools and software as the field of digital technology evolves. So um, for our last topic for this um, part one of introduction to virtual assistants, setting up as a virtual assistant. assistant. So after considering all the responsibilities, after knowing what, what is a virtual assistant, what do they do, now it's time for you to set up as a virtual assistant. So of course, um, you have to consider legal uh, legal legalities like um, business structure, contracts, et cetera. And then now um, choosing a niche or a special specialization and then setting up a home office and selecting essential tools. So now you're ready to become a virtual assistant, uh, ready to have your first client. What is what is your business structure? You have to determine the legal structure of your virtual assistant's business. Common options include um, sole proprietorship. Sole proprietorship are the type of business that is using your, um, your legal name. LLC, limited liability company or corporation. Each has its own implications for liability, taxes, and management. It also depends on what country you're in or... Um, um, so it, to, to know more, you have to consult a, um, an accountant or, uh, a legal, legal professional about this one. But sometimes, um, most, most virtual assistants are working or under, under a business structure of sole proprietorship. And then when they got more clients, they move to um, uh, a wider uh, type of business structure, which is um, incorporation or partnership. And then consider business name and registration. You have to have a business name. Choose a business name that reflects your services and check its availability. Register your business name and obtain any necessary licenses or permits based on local regulations. Contracts and agreements. So um, you have to create comprehensive client contracts that outline services, payment terms, deadlines, confidentiality, and other terms. Clear contracts help protect both you and your clients. This is actually for your protection and for, benef for the benefit of both parties. So you have to... You have to have um, um, contract and agreement ready when you start your virtual assistance business, okay? And um, we actually, part of our course is um, a complete template of all the, con it's actually a lot, uh, a lot of contract templates and agreements. Um, it's done for you contracts and agreement actually. Our team, um, our team of great virtual assistants were was able to um, uh, to construct those contracts and agreements. So if you want to check that out, um, please check out in the link um, in our bio. Also, insurance. Some uh, virtual assistants um, they consider insurance. Consider liability insurance to protect against potential claims or disputes. This can provide peace of mind and professional credibility. 
So next is choosing a niche or niche or a specialization. Evaluate your strengths. So you have to choose a niche or a specialization. The reason is that um, most clients are actually looking for um, if, if you have a specialization, it tends to that client pays more because they can't find anyone who is who 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 does the job really well. So if you specialize in one uh, niche, that would be much better. So evaluate your strengths. To do that is first is to evaluate your strengths, assess your skills, experience, and interest to determine which services you excel at and enjoy providing. Um, ano ba yung hilig mong gawin? Are you are you good with um, customer service? Then your niche could be customer support. Are you good at um, SEO or um, search engine optimization? Medyo may pagka artist ka ba? Then you can go to um, you can you can try graphic design or website design. Okay. Um, do you like social media? Then that can be your niche. You can be a social media manager. Or are you good at uh, doing administrative tasks? Then administrative uh, VA could be your, um, your niche or a specialization. So you have to assess your skills and ask yourself, um, what am I good at? Okay, so next is market research. Research the demand for specific virtual assistant services within different industries. Identify areas where your skills can fulfill a specific need. Um, we have a wider or we have an in-depth discussion about this one, about doing market research, which we will be providing in the future. Um, I, I believe this topic needs um, medyo kulang, medyo kulang ang, uh, ilang minuto to discuss about market research. So we have a lot of ways to actually do a market research. Medyo, um, it, it entails a lot of um, researching. So magahanap ka sa Google, what are the most... Um, what are the most marketable or what is the most in-demand um, in demand niche for virtual assistants? Ano nga ba yung mga businesses na medyo naghahanap lagi ng virtual assistants? So considering the industries that we, um, that we discussed earlier, you might uh, be able to start from there, doing your own market research. And then target audience, define your ideal client profile. Tailor your services to their pain points and requirements. So you can't just serve um, anyone, okay? So maybe on your first um, uh, first few months as a virtual assistant, tanggap ka lang ng tanggap ng trabaho, which is fine, kasi gusto mo nga ng trabaho, but eventually you will have to have your um, target audience. This is defining your client profile. Um Ano nga ba yung gusto kong uh, iserve na client? Do I want a client, a uh, small business client? Do I want a coach client? Do I want to um, do I want to serve um, an e-commerce client, a nonprofit client? So ano yung mga target audience mo? Sino sila? And then um, from there you can tailor your services or packages. You can make a packages out of uh, your target audience and um, from, from the services that they need, okay? And then niche expertise. Specializing in a niche can set you apart from general virtual assistants. Like what I said earlier, um, sa mga nag special, uh, specialized or special uh, virtual assistant or virtual assistant who is specialized in something, um, they are apart from vir general virtual assistants because they attract clients seeking specialized services and those clients seeking specialized services tend to pay more, okay? Setting up a home office and selecting essential tools. So of course, um, you will be working from home most of your time, in fact, all of the time. Um, so you have to choose or set up a home office. 
Okay, so setting up a home office and selecting essential, essential tools. Um, first is your workspace. Dedicate a quiet and organized space for your home office. This area should be free from distractions and conducive to focused work. Um, so, may mga clients na ayaw nila ng may mga background noise, ayaw nila ng, um, it's, it's also for your own good, actually, having a quiet and organized workspace because it, uh, it keeps you away from distraction. So client is thinking, how can you work properly or how can you, how can you do your job well if marami kang distractions like yung mga bata nasa same room mo? So um, it's, it's also for your own good, actually. And then furniture and ergonomics. So, um, maghapon kang nakaupo, and then, um, nandun na yung dapat mag-invest ka talaga sa comfortable chair, desk, and other ergonomic accessories to support long hours of work. That is really important. Maybe you can start with um, simple chair, but uh, when you when you get to have more more and more clients, it's really worth investing for ergonomic chair and desk and also ergonomic mouse pad. Trust me, it, uh, it's really uh, worth it. Next is technology. Your computer. Choose a reliable computer with sufficient processing power for multitasking. Um, meron pa ang iba dyan eh, nag, uh, ano, nag dual screen. So, it's... Uh, you should really be choosing a reliable computer because that's your main tool to perform your task as a virtual assistant. Of course, high-speed internet. Um, hindi may mga client na ayaw nila ng um, uh, like, like hotspot. They really require high-speed internet or stable internet. A stable internet connection is crucial for seamless communication and remote work. Headset or microphone. Um, Meron mga client na they want their virtual assistant to have at least headset for their communication or whenever you call um, you call a customer, they don't want to let the customer know that they're outsourcing their services. So they like require sila ng, uh, noise cancellation, uh, headset with noise cancellation. Of course, microphone, you can... Um, these are also used or essential for client calls and virtual meetings. Webcam, a good webcam enhances video communication quality. Software and tools. So, ito na yung sinasabi ko kanina na you have to be very familiar with these uh, common software and tools. Uh, most of our clients are using these. Wala pa ako narinig na client na hindi gumagamit ng Asana or Trello or Monday.com or hindi gumagamit ng Google Workspace. So you really have to learn these stuff, okay? So software and tools, project management are like uh, tools like Trello, Asana, or Monday.com help you organize tasks and deadlines. For communication, uh, you can choose platforms like Slack, Microsoft Teams, or Zoom facilitate collaboration and client communication. For document management, um, Google Workspace is really helpful. Microsoft Office or Dropbox for storing and sharing files. Again, don't be scared. Huwag kang matakot na mag-aral mag, uh, mag ng mga software and tools. They just sound uh, complicated, but really napakadali ng nila especially Google Workspace. Once you get the hang of it, uh, kapag ginamit mo na siya every day, it's just going to be easy. Invoicing and accounting. Um, tools like FreshBooks or QuickBooks assist in managing invoices and finances. This is not so common um, unless your job is really bookkeeping or accounting. Um, clients will require you to at least know the basics of fresh books or QuickBooks, but not all. So um, this is this is really optional. If uh, my client ka lang na um, they need you to to be aware of bookkeeping or accounting. Backup solutions um, regularly backup your work and files to prevent data loss. 
napakahirap ng pinagtrabahoan mo siya ng ilang oras and then hindi mo biglang nagkaroon ng glitch yung computer mo hindi mo siya na save so it's really hard so you, you always have to have backup solutions of course lighting and acoustics um, ensure proper lighting and soundproofing to create a professional environment for virtual meetings and calls It's um, really important to be in a quiet area, to be in a well-lit area kapag gusto ka makita ng client or um, your job requires you to um, to attend a meeting or to talk to a customer via video call, then uh, proper lighting and also soundproofing kapag may mga bata sa kabilang room na maingay, you really have to uh, be in a quiet space. Okay, and, uh, my name is Dablin. I'm the founder of Virtual Force Staffing Corporation. It is our goal to empower you, um, especially aspiring virtual assistants, by uh, giving you the right information. And um, we encourage you to really know the basics of uh, virtual assistants before, before deciding whether you, you will pursue a virtual assistant uh, career or not. So next, um, let's discuss about building an effective online presence. In today's digital age, your online presence is your virtual business card, and that's true. As a virtual assistant, um, it's very essential to establish a strong online presence to attract clients, showcase your skills, and build trust. So in this video, we'll explore um, some steps to create a professional website and engaging social media profiles. We'll also uh, dive into the importance of a robust um, LinkedIn profile and how to effectively showcase your skills, experience, and portfolio. So remember, uh, these topics are just introduction. If you want to know more, um, you have to be very proactive in researching about certain topics. We will also try our best to, um, to tackle each and every topic more in depth. So moving on, um, creating a first is to create a professional website and social media profile. Let me just move my video here. So a professional website. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, domain and hosting, but this is something you should, um, these are jargons that you should be familiar with. Um, professional website is not mandatory. You can start your virtual assistant business without professional website, but this is highly recommended, okay? So invest in a domain name that reflects your business and secure reliable hosting. Your domain name could be your name uh, with, uh, with some keywords like virtual assistant. So be creative. Um, if you want to know more about choosing name for your domain and also for your, uh, for your business name, we created a TikTok about it, a TikTok video about it or a Reels, Reels video about it. So you may want to check it out. It's, in our, it's on our Facebook page too. Um, next is design. Uh, create a clear, user-friendly website design that aligns with your brand and showcases your service. Um, if you also visit our website, you will see that our brand color are mostly pink, black, and also um, uh, this light green here. So it's very consistent across all our um, social media pages and even in our website. Next is um, content. Clearly state your services, highlight your skills and experience, provide contact information and include a blog or resources relevant to your niche. Again, um, it all boils down to optimization. You have to make sure that uh, your content is optimized. You have to include everything, skills, provide contact information, uh, include uh, some links where they can find your uh, blogs or examples of your work. It's, um, it's like giving everything in one content. You know what I mean? So, um, so when client sees that, they don't have to research or go anywhere. It's right there in front of them, everything, okay? Next is social media profiles. Um, consistency is very important when it comes to social media. Maintain a consistent profile picture, handle and branding across all platforms. Like I mentioned, um, 
we we carry the same uh, brand color in our website when you check our social media profiles in Instagram, TikTok, and also um, uh, LinkedIn profile and Facebook profile or Facebook um, page, the we we carry the same brand color, same tone of content, so everything it's consistent. Next is engagement. Uh, regularly update your profiles with relevant content, engage with your audience, and respond to comments or messages promptly. Next is linking. Um, include links to your website and other professional platforms on your social media profiles. You have to optimize your social media profiles. We have, um, we have Facebook now has a very great, um, uh, what do you call this? When you open, you can add, um, you can add your social media there. You can even add um, your features. So make it, make it as, um, as optimized as possible. Maybe uh, we can we can create a separate topic on this one. This is very this is a very wide topic also. Yeah, so um, watch out for those videos. So linking is very important. Again, um, include links to your website and other professional platforms on your social media profiles. Importance of a strong LinkedIn profile. So um, LinkedIn profile. If you haven't, if you want to start or if you want to become a virtual assistant or you want to start a virtual assistant uh, business, I highly recommend to create a LinkedIn profile because, um, because I just think that uh, LinkedIn is for professionals and this is where professionals are always, um, your client will, instead of going to Facebook or going to Instagram, um, I'm 99% sure that they will look for your name in LinkedIn first. So um, you have to have professional branding in your LinkedIn profile. Headline, um, craft a clear and concise headline that conveys your expertise and value proposition. Next is your summary. Write a compelling summary that highlights your skills, experience, and what sets you apart as a virtual assistant. Next is, um, you have to include all your experience, list relevant work experience, emphasizing achievements and contributions in your LinkedIn profile. Okay, um, importance of a strong LinkedIn profile also is networking. This is where you can find connections. You have to connect with professionals in your industry, potential clients and peers to expand your network. So you can find clients by uh, recommendation if, um, or um, if, you, if you were able to network, that person or that connection can recommend you to a potential client. Also groups, join relevant LinkedIn groups. Groups are really a big thing now, not just in LinkedIn, but also in Facebook and also Instagram, but I haven't uh, tried Instagram groups yet. So join relevant LinkedIn groups to engage in discussions, share insights, and establish your expertise. Another importance of a strong LinkedIn profile are endorsements and recommendations. List skills relevant to virtual assistants and gather endorsements from colleagues and clients. So if Let's say, for example, I saw your uh, LinkedIn profile. I saw that um, you've started virtual assistance or you're doing um, your, your uh, servicing clients. If I, if I knew a business person or an entrepreneur that is looking for a virtual assistant, I can recommend you because I always see your profile that you're, that is what you're doing. You're doing virtual assistants and uh, you're servicing different clients. So this is a good, um, a good avenue to really showcase your skills. Recommendations, uh, it's the same, uh, request recommendations from satisfied clients to build credibility. If um, your client is satisfied with your service, they can also recommend you, okay? Next is showcasing your skills, experience, and portfolio. Skills and expertise. Like I said, um, optimization is really important. 
use relevant, um, not just in your profile, but also in using keywords. So keyword optimization, use relevant keywords in your profiles to make it easier for potential clients to find you. So since um, your, your, your profile is more about uh, virtual assistant, you might add virtual assistant in your profile. Or um, if you're uh, specializing in social media, you may add social media, VA, and then your name or your business name. Or um, if you're specializing in SEO or search engine optimization, you can add SEO expert, and then next is your name. So something like that. Next is show, don't tell. Provide examples of specific tasks, projects, or challenges you've successfully tackled. This is another example of optimizing your content. So um, make sure that um, you always show what you can offer to the table, what value you can bring to the client or to their business. So always um, provide examples of your tasks, projects, or challenges, okay? Showcasing your skills, experience, and portfolio. So portfolio is um, really important when it comes to uh, virtual assistants. Some clients will ask you, um, can, I, can you show me your portfolio? Do you have a portfolio? So those are the basic questions from the client. So what is in your portfolio? You have to share case studies or success, success stories that demonstrate your problem-solving skills and the impact you've made. Also um, include visuals like images, graphics, or samples of your work to make your portfolio more engaging, okay? And then uh, testimonials and reviews. Take advantage of uh, testimonials and reviews. You have to um, gather client feedback. If you feel that uh, you've done a great job um, uh, in a client or in a, um, for a client, you have to ask some sort of a feedback so that you can share it to your social media or you can share it to your um, website. So you have to showcase positive feedback and reviews from clients you've assisted in the past. Also um, highlight how your virtual assistant skills contributed to their success and business growth. Continuous learning and growth. Um, mention any relevant certifications, courses, or workshops you've completed to stay up to date in your field. So uh, this is a plus, this is actually plus points. When you have um, relevant certifications, you've attended relevant courses or workshops. Now is um, professional development. Show that you're committed to improving your skills and staying current with industry trends, okay? So next, um, I think this is one of the, mo the, the most important topics when it comes to virtual assistants, of course, is finding clients. So um, para maging sustainable ang business, para magtuloy-tuloy, this is, this is actually uh, the reason why, um, why we're doing this, right? Um, when you have clients, you have profit, right? you will earn money when you have clients. So without clients, there's no profit. So, so it's really important to know um, the strategies of how to find clients. Finding clients is crucial for the sustainability and growth of your virtual assistant's career. Clients provide the income, like I said, uh, diversity of projects and networking opportunities needed to enhance your skills build a strong portfolio and establish a positive reputation in the industry. So what are the ways to find clients? Now, um, have you heard about prospecting and lead generation? So napaka importante nito sa, sa virtual assistants uh, business. So in the prospecting and lead generation, you have to find your ideal client profile. There is uh, what they call like a customer avatar or your client avatar. You have to define your ideal client based on factors like industry, business size, location, and specific needs. This helps you focus your efforts on targeting the right clients. Like uh, I mentioned in the first lesson, are you um, are you 
Are you planning to service small businesses? Are you planning to service um, real, real estate or uh, real estate businesses or realtors or brokers? Or are you planning to service agencies? Um, what is the location? Do you want uh, do you want clients from Canada? Do you want clients from the US? So um, make it as specific as possible. This helps you focus your efforts on targeting the right clients. So para hindi siya kalat kalat. Para um, maybe maybe when you're starting, um, it it's understandable to to get um, whoever client that will need your service. That's okay because you need um, you need experience. But eventually, when you become um, um, more specialized, if you have a specialization, it is very ideal to um, find your ideal client. Okay. Cold outreach. Have you heard about cold outreach? So uh, cold outreach is uh, researching and identifying potential clients that um, match your ideal profile. Craft personalized and value-driven outreach messages that address their pain points and needs. So ano nga ba yung uh, cold outreach? It means um, you've, you've um, uh, nahanap mo yung mga contacts nila by, um, by doing lead generation. Or there is someone, you hired someone na naghanap ng mga email addresses nila through, um, through Google. This is actually a uh, napakalawak din itong topic na to when it comes to cold outreach. So remember, this is just um, an introduction. Uh, we, we can spend uh, a day discussing about cold outreach, but nevertheless, uh, I'll give you as much information about cold outreach today. So we do cold outreach via a call or via email. Um, also, um, DMing clients, DMing potential clients. So you construct like a, like um, an email. Uh, you craft personalized and value-driven messages for them. So th this client doesn't know you. You don't know the client as well. You found them uh, by uh, targeting them and by doing lead generation. So when you try to reach out to them, um, they don't know you, so you have to make sure that um, you really craft your messages towards or addressing their pain points. Ano nga ba yung kailangan nila na maibibigay mo as a virtual assistant? If your target client is a real estate uh, client, dapat designed or crafted yung email mo or yung call mo or yung uh, DM mo for um for real estate clients so hindi siya dapat general okay so yeah that's uh, just one tip when it comes to cold outreach so another uh, way to um get or finding clients is content marketing uh content marketing is uh creating valuable content on your website uh, meron kang blog related to virtual assistants and your niche Next is um, sharing insights, tips, and case studies to establish your expertise and attract potential clients. Um, merong mga contents na, um, I remember doing this content about um, 10 signs that you need a virtual assistant. So maraming nag-respond uh, nag nag doon na mga potential clients because I made a content out of it and then that content made them realize or made my target audience or my target client realize why why do they need virtual assistants like us, okay? So, ganun ang magiging uh, content mo. So, once you've targeted, um, once you've um, um, reached a client through your content, you've already made uh, content marketing effective, okay? Next is um, freelance platforms and job boards. Yes, you can find um, you can find clients um, via uh, Upwork. So, marami tayong mga mga job boards and freelance platforms like Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr. 
So platform selection, you have to choose reputable freelance platforms that align with your services and expertise, such as Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr. So the reason, the reason Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr are um, specifically mentioned here because um, they've already established um, a reputable uh, they've already uh, reputable to, to the clients. So Mejo Iwas na siya sa scam, okay? They have this um, way to actually uh, verify their client or verify clients who need virtual assistance. So they will ask um, the, the clients or the potential clients to send ID identification, to send their business number, and also um, sometimes to take pictures and also, um, they can also verify the payment. So I would I wouldn't say walang scam or walang scammers in Upwork, Freelancer, or Fiverr, but um, it's very less chance to get scammed when you join a reputable reputable platform compared sa kung saan saan lang. Okay. So again, uh, when you join when you join these platforms, make sure that um, you optimize your profile and portfolio on these platforms to showcase your skills and attract clients. So applying strategically. When you're applying, you have to make sure that you tailor your proposals to each project. In this general proposal, we have um, in our course, we have templates for that, okay? So you have to tailor your proposal to each project addressing the client's needs and demonstrating your understanding. So again, um, if your target client are real estate agents, don't make it as general as possible. You have to tailor your proposal. Ano nga ba ang mga kailangang services ng mga um, ng, uh, real estate agents? So it, it doesn't apply to a real estate agent um, services or needs will not apply to a wellness center or a um a yeah a spa spa center needs so you have to really uh you really have to tailor your proposals okay and uh, highlight your relevant experience and explain how you can add value to their project building reputation Deliver high quality work to clients on these platforms to build positive reviews and ratings. So, um, ang, ang isang downside ng pag-join ng mga platforms and is napaka-transparent niya. So, once na may client ka na ayaw ng service mo and then they gave you a review, most of your clients will see that or all of the, the potential clients can see that. So, first project mo pa lang, you really have to make sure that you ace it. Galingan mo na. Uh, ibigay mo na ng lahat mo um, in your first project. Okay? So positive feedback and completed projects increase your credibility and uh, attract more clients. So next is networking and referrals. Yes. Um, online networking. Join virtual assistant forums, social media groups, and professional communities related to your niche. So um, like us, we have a Facebook group. So one goal din don is to highlight uh, virtual assistants and also um, um, in the hopes that we uh, client don na go observe and then uh, hopefully, makahanap, makahanap kami ng mga um, legit na clients doon. So, if you want to join, go to our Facebook group and uh, Facebook page and uh, check the link in our Facebook group. Okay? Engage in discussions, share insights, and offer assistance to showcase your expertise. So, um, if you're engaging in discussions, so more exposure, right? Especially kung ang mga um, comments mo is um, valuable. So if you offer assistance to showcase your expertise, I'm sure um, nababalik sa'yo yun. 
uh, client might see it na, oy, medyo magaling tong um, mag-assist or medyo expert siya at uh, he, she, he or she can share uh, can share her insights. So maybe um, client will reach out to you. So offline networking too. Um, we, if we have online networking, we also have offline networking. Attend industry conferences, seminars, and workshops virtual or in-person to connect with potential clients and peers. Networking events provide opportunities to establish personal connections. So again, uh, kung may kakilala siyang isa na um, pwede kanyang i-recommend and alam niya na, na you're a virtual assistant, then pwede kanyang i-recommend sa kakilala niya na uh, maybe doing a business or in need of a virtual assistant. Okay? Referrals. Encourage satisfied clients to refer you to others in need of virtual assistance. Um, offer incentives for referrals, such as discounts on future services or other value-added benefits. So let's go to content marketing and branding. Um, blogging and content creation. So share your expertise through blog posts, articles, and videos that demonstrate your knowledge and skills. Content establishes your authority and attracts organic traffic to your website. So just, ika uh, nila is content is king. Um, so you have to just uh, keep creating content, keep creating, make it as valuable as possible, okay? And then social media management, share valuable tips, industry insights and success stories on your social media profiles. Engage with your audience, respond to comments and participate in relevant discussions. Email marketing. Uh, this is another way or uh, in, in finding clients is email marketing. This is really powerful. So uh, first is you have to build an email list of potential clients and existing connections. Send regular newsletters with valuable content and updates about your services. Another um, napaka-wide din ng topic about email marketing. So nandun na yung uh, lead generation, dapat meron kang lead magnet, something valuable na in exchange of um, a person's email. So um, come to think of it, are you willing to give your email just to anyone? So there should be something in return for me to be willing to give my email address to you. Let's say, for example, um, you're a virtual assistant and then um, you want like a template, uh, you, you're you offering like a template or checklist for, uh, for small business owners. So business owners um, will find the template or that checklist useful then they will sign up or they will sign up to your uh, to your lead magnet and then you will build an email list out of it. So um, again, napakalawak na topic ng email marketing. But uh, this is one of the best um, um, strategies to find clients. Communication and uh, relationship and client relationship. So let's move on to communication and client relationship. Napaka-importante din nito as a virtual assistant, your ability to communicate clearly, set expectations, um, and manage client interactions plays a pivotal role in your journey. So uh, we will dive into the art of building strong client relationships through open communication, uh, setting boundaries, and embracing feedback, of course. So effective ways to communicate with clients. Uh, I think uh, last video, we mentioned that communication is one of um, the, the, the skills and qualities of a virtual assistant, and it's really, really important. So what are effective ways to communicate with clients? Of course, uh, be clear and concise. So uh, clear and concise communication. Use a straightforward language to convey ideas, tasks, and expectations. Um, so clients are busy. They are business owners, okay? So don't uh, go around the bush um, trying, to, trying to explain what you want to happen. Be straightforward, okay? 
Avoid jargon or technical terms unless your client is familiar with them. Don't sound very uh, knowledgeable to the extent na hindi ka na maintindihan ng client mo. So, um, avoid using those jargons. If your client doesn't know SEO, then say um, um, search engine optimization. Don't use jargons that your client uh, can, can be intimidated or can't understand you. Of course, uh, give regular updates. This is really important. As a client myself, as a business owner myself, and I have VAs too, it's really important for me that my VAs are regularly updating me, okay? So keep clients informed about the progress of their projects. Uh, provide updates on milestone. Where are you now? Um, ano na ba yung mga nakompleto mong tasks? And upcoming deliverables, okay? Responsive communication. It's um, it's a no-no na hindi ka sasagot sa client mo. Okay? Respond to client messages, emails, or inquiries promptly. Set expectations for response times based on your availability. So uh, if you have different time zone, and most of the times, magkaiba talaga kayo ng time zone. If your client is in the U.S. or uh, Pacific um, Eastern Standard Time, and then you're in the Philippines, medyo magkaiba kayo ng time zone, you have to set expectations because client a uh, client can understand that. They won't expect you to um, to respond right away kapag alam nila na natutulog ka that time. So you just have to um, make sure to set expectations um, at the onset. Of course, active listening. Understand your client's needs by actively listening to their requirements. Ask clarifying questions to ensure you have a complete understanding. So setting clear expectations and boundaries. Um, setting clear expectations and boundaries. What is your project scope? You have to um, clearly define the scope of work and the specific tasks you will handle. Outline what is included and what falls outside the scope. So ang nangyayari kasi um, when we don't clear set expectations or um, uh, project scope to your client, Clients are just, um, uh, may tendency kasi minsan na client are just uh, um, bigay lang ng bigay ng mga tasks, okay? So, you have to be at the onset of the project or of the task or your uh, contract with the client. You have to outline what is really included in your, um, in your uh, scope of work, okay? So, timeline and deadlines. Set realistic deadlines for tasks and projects. Do not overpromise. Kung hindi mo siya kayang gawin at kung yun lang ang kaya mong gawin, do not, uh, um, just, just don't say na kaya ko itong gawin within 24 hours, but in reality, you can't, okay? Client can understand that. Timeline and deadlines. Communicate any potential delays in advance and propose revised timelines. It's not, um, it wouldn't hurt to ask more time if you really need more time, okay? Client can understand that. So set realistic deadlines for tasks and projects. Again, is um, communication channels. So in your communication channels, um, you have to be very, uh, very specific. Saan, saan ba kayo? Kasi um, before the contract starts, especially in our agency, we um, I always set expectations to clients. Um, what is the best communication channels that um, the, the VA and client can communicate or me, client, and the VA can communicate? Mostly um, through project management software or through email or um, if client has a preferred software, then dun kami communicate. So you have to be very specific, okay? Let clients know when and how they can reach you. If um, email works for you, then go for email, okay? If um, client asks um, for you to use a specific software, then go for it. Okay. Next is availability and working hours. So establish your working hours and availability. 
um, meron mga client na meron silang specific hours that you have to be present or you have to be working with these uh, specific hours. Meron din naman client na napakaluwang. Uh, sometimes they will ask you uh, what is the best time for you to work. So you have to establish your working hours. And then uh, communicate when you're reachable and when you might be unavailable. Again, time zone differences. So you have to let the clients know that eto mga oras na to, I might be sleeping. I might be, I might not be able to answer your questions or um, reply to you immediately. So you have to um, know when you are reachable or when you're not available. Okay. Handling feedback and criticism professionally. Okay. So in this topic, um, you have to have, or um, whenever you're handling feedback and criticism, always make sure you have positive attitude, okay? Approach feedback with an open and positive mindset. So ang, ang feedback is, is really, really part of our job as virtual assistant. If, um, if your client is giving you feedback, accept it positively, okay? It's for your own growth. So, um, meron, kung meron kang ginawang mali or meron siyang hindi gusto sa ginawa mo, just um, approach feedback with an open and positive mindset. That this is for me, this is for my own good, this is for my own improvement. Um, I will learn a lesson from this and then I will, uh, I will improve next time, okay? So see it as an opportunity for growth and improvement, okay? So um, next is think and acknowledge. If the client give you um, feedback or um, or any feedback for that matter sa, sa mga ginawa mo or your task or projects, express gratitude for the feedback showing that you value their input, okay? And then acknowledge any valid points raised by the client. It's also showing to the client how interested you are and uh, how... how um, how open you are to um, positive feedback and criticism. Next is uh, clarify and seek solutions. So if feedback is unclear, ask for specific details to understand the issue better. Um, communication barriers sometimes happen. So uh, you have to be very clear or if you, if you have to talk if you're just uh, communicating via email and it seems that you can't understand each other, you have to schedule a call. Hey, can I give you a call? Can we talk about it? So um, for, for you, for both of you to understand each other better, okay? And then collaborate with the client to find solutions or improvement. So you are a team. You Whether you like it or not, you have to work together. You have to work together in finding solutions and improvements, okay? Next is constructive responses. Address criticism in a respectful and professional manner. Avoid becoming defensive. Focus on finding solutions. So, um, meron na ako mga na-encounter ng mga BAs na ganito. Whenever you're giving response or whenever you're giving um, criticism, Eh, kasi ganito yung ano eh, hindi kasi ganito yung ano eh. So, maraming dahilan. So, just avoid becoming defensive. It's it's not, I'm not saying na hindi ka na rin magsasalita. I'm just saying, um, just uh, if, if the client says that this is the one, this is what you, um, uh, this is what you failed to do, or ito yung hindi maganda sa ginawa mo, or you have to change this, I don't like this, go, go together walk hand in hand with your client and then ask. So let's work together to find a solution. Teach me, tell me what to do, okay? So it's, it's, uh, it's really important. Now is continuous improvement. Um, so use feedback as a learning tool to enhance your skills and services. And then uh, show clients how you've implemented their suggestions in the future work. Napakaganda nito. Um, I really admire virtual assistants. Like, um, halimbawa, meron ako sinabi na parang medyo uh, kailangan mong baguhin to or um, baguhin natin to. Mas maganda siguro kung ganito. And then the virtual assistant will will show me how um, how he or she changed that based on what we agreed and what I like. So yung mga ganun. Um, it's, it's really... Um, 
it's really heartwarming for uh, for clients whenever a virtual assistant is like that. Okay. All right. So um, our last topic is time management and productivity. Uh, again, um, marami pa tayong topic, but I think we can cover that in the third video. Medyo mahaba na tong video natin. So let's go to time management and productivity. Techniques for managing tasks and project efficiently. So um, there will come a time na dadami na ang clients mo and then um, you will work longer hours. So you really have to um, find um, effective techniques on how you will manage tasks and projects, okay? So number one is task list and to-do lists. Create detailed task lists for each project, breaking them down into actionable items. And then uh, I, it's really important having your own list and having your detailed task list, okay? Prioritize, prior, prioritize task based on urgency, importance, and deadline. So, um, dapat alam mo kung ano yung mga mas urgent, ano yung mas importante, and then get yung mga deadlines niya. So, ganon. Ganon ka mag-organize uh, mag, mag, mag ng list and to-do list mo. Next is project management tools. Um, like I've uh, mentioned in the first video, you have to know at least how to use these platforms or um, watch tutorials about these commonly used platforms for project management, uh, like Trello, Asana, or Monday.com to organize tasks, set due dates, and collaborate with clients or team members. Uh, next is batching tasks. Group similar tasks together and complete them in designated time blocks. If um, yung, um, yung complexity ng isang task is the same with this one, uh, that's how you batch them. You group similar tasks together and then um, uh, complete them in designated time blocks. And then batching minimizes contact switching and enhances focus. So kapag ang focus mo is more on marketing, marketing ka lang muna. Don't go on um don't go on the SEO side or uh, website design side which is entirely different from marketing. Okay? So if you're doing marketing, do marketing for all um uh, if you're doing content marketing, do all content marketing in all um in all uh, platform, okay? If you need to do content marketing, do marketing in your Facebook, Instagram, and then wag ka munang mag-switch sa ibang uh, task, which is entirely different from marketing. Okay. Next is time tracking. Uh, use time tracking tools to monitor the time spent on various tasks like Toggle, Clockify. Um, so those are very useful. And uh, I would suggest to really... Um, uh, ask client then kung ano yung time tracking na ginagamit nila. Some clients also use time tracking and for your own um, para maging organized ka na rin and, and you can uh, manage your task. And then next is it helps analyze productivity patterns and make adjustments as needed. So that's how time tracking can really help you. Meron ding mga software dyan, uh, uh, for time tracking. Prioritization and time blocking. Prioritization and time blocking. So um, if you're familiar with this one, meron tayong tinatawag na Eisenhower matrix. So you have to categorize tasks into four quadrants. Urgent and important. Urgent but not, uh, important but not urgent. Urgent but not important. And neither urgent nor important. So you know, you know Eisenhower matrix natin tinatawag. You can research more about that. Um, you can watch YouTube videos about it. But I think uh, this is one effective uh, prior prioritization techniques or time blocking technique. Then focus on task in the important and urgent quadrant, okay? Next is, um, um, I wanna introduce you to Pomodoro technique. So work for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break. 
So if you want to know more about Pomodoro technique and how it can help you in your um, in your time management, you can also uh, watch videos or uh, research more about this one. So after four Pomodoros or after four 25 minutes, take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. Um, it's, they say it helps you um, to clear your mind, be more efficient, and be more effective if you use this technique. Next is time blocking. Allocate specific time blocks for different tasks or projects, and then uh, protect these blocks from interruptions to maintain focused productivity. If you have a high priority uh, task or project, it's one hour project, okay? You have to block that one hour and uh, it's it should be specifically um, dedicated to that one task alone, okay? So that's what you call time blocking. All right, so um, next is uh, dealing with distractions and maintaining work-life balance, okay? So, uh, let me check. I think okay. So let's uh let's go with this one, dealing with distractions and maintaining work life balance. Um, like I said in the first video, when you're working from home, there's a lot of uh, distractions. Pag may anak ka, um, well, let's consider uh, may distract ka talaga kapag may um umiyak na isang anak jan or um merong uh, nakabukas na TV sa labas. So there's a lot of distractions. So what what are you going to do or how, how you should deal with it as a virtual assistant, okay? So distraction management. Um, identify common distraction and take steps to minimize them. So kapag masyadong maingay, you can be distracted right away, okay? Madali kang madistract uh, kapag may maingay. So how, how can you deal with it? Um, Pwede bang gawin mong soundproof yung room mo, lumipat ka sa ibang kwarto, or, um, or talk to, um, pwede mong kausapin yung mga kasama mo sa bahay na, hey, um, during this time I'm working, so please, uh, iwas iwasan natin yung masyado maingay kasi I'm, I'm, I'm being distracted. Okay? So use website blockers or apps that limit access to distracting websites during work hours. You're lucky kapag ang client mo is hindi minomonitor ang um ang ang usage mo ng ng monitor. You know what I mean? Kapag wala siyang screen na nagsho-show kung kung nasaan ka. Um some clients have that um have that access. Minsan tinitingnan nila if you're um if you're uh, visiting social media or lalo na yung mga client na masyadong mahigpit when it comes to uh, the, the security, data security, ayaw nila ng mga um, meron kang ibang website na pinupuntahan while you're doing your task, okay? So just use website blockers or apps that limit access to distracting websites during work hours. Designated workspace. Create a clutter-free and organized workspace dedicated solely to work. Hindi yung um, sa may kusina or sa sala ka nagtatrabaho, you really have to have a designated workspace. Kahit maliit lang yan, make sure that you have your own desk. Um, if it's uh, like me, it's just this is in my, um, in my son's room. I find this place... Um, malayo sa distractions and uh, um, very uh, masyadong hindi, medyo organized siya, hindi siya makalat na lugar sa bahay. So I chose this one. Just make sure na away ka from, from uh, the rest of the household. So that's your designated workspace. Okay, and then train your mind to asset, associate this space with focus and productivity. So, how can you focus kung merong TV sa harapan mo and then merong, merong pagkain sa kusina? So, so it's, it's really um, uh, a matter of um, training your mind in the right space. And then, um, when, whenever you're in this space, matatrain yung mind mo na, oh, nandito na ako sa work zone ko. Then, I have to be, uh, I have to be in work mode now. Yung mga ganun. Okay? So, designated workspace is important. 
um, boundaries and breaks. Set clear boundaries with family and friends to avoid interruptions during work hours. This is really important, especially um, sa mga nag work from home, doing remote jobs. Um, talk to your family. Make sure that they know your schedule. They know that um, from this time to this time, you're working. And um, they shouldn't be interrupting you unless, of course, it's an emergency. Okay? And then take regular breaks to recharge, stretch, and refocus. Breaks are important, so you have to take it. Now, um, ending the workday, uh, establish a routine that signals the end of the workday. Close your workspace, shut down your computer, and transition into personal time. Napakahirap mang gawin. Uh, minsan kapag work from home ka, it's really hard to uh, separate your personal life to your work life. Okay? So minsan kasi um, kasama mo na yung family mo, pero naka-open pa rin yung um, laptop mo. Or kasama mo na family mo, yung, yung phone mo, naka-open pa rin. And then nandun yung mga app na ginagamit mo for the client. And then si client may email. So, um... It's really up to you. You have to have uh, that transition um, from from working to really ending your day or your your work day. Okay, and then next is really really important self care and well being. Um, despite uh, how busy we are, we always have to make sure that uh, we do self care and we always take care of ourselves because. Um, the, the reason we're doing this is for our family, okay? Uh, to earn money for our family, to have a better living, to have a good future for our kids. But this will all be useless. Lahat ng pagsisikap mo, lahat ng uh, pinagtatrabahuan mo would be useless kung ang health mo naman ang, mag, uh, ang, ang mag-deteriorate or magsasakripisyo. So you have to prioritize self-care activities like exercise, meditation, and hobbies. And then uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle contributes to better focus and productivity. So para din sa'yo yan, um, if you're too much stress, if uh, wala ka nang masyadong exercise, and then wala ka masyadong tulog, then um, less focus and less productivity na rin. So nagsasuffer din ang work mo, okay? All right, so um, I think that's the end of our uh, second or part two of our um, introduction to virtual assistance. I hope you learned a lot today. And um, so we were able to discuss um, building an effective online presence, how to find clients, time management, and uh, um, uh, boundaries and breaks and then your self-care. So we um, hopefully you've learned a lot today. If you know someone or friends, colleagues, family, you know will benefit from this training video, please share this, okay? This is free. Um, um, I hope nung nag-uumpisa kami or nag-uumpisa ang mga VAs ko as virtual assistant, merong training na ganito or at least introduction man lang, I think this will be really, really helpful. Okay, so yeah, um, if if you may, um, you can visit our website or you can visit our Facebook page, our TikTok account, Virtual Force Staffing Corp. Um, we have a lot of free resources available. And then um, if you really want to uh, dig deeper or you want to learn in depth um, about virtual assistance, we're offering um, courses. So check our Facebook page, check the link in our bio, and uh, we have a lot of templates and important resources there. Those are essential templates. Um, I wish meron ding ganun noon na gagawin na done for you templates. You just copy and paste it and then just modify it. And also um, we're offering a lot of bonuses there. So if, again, if you find this, uh, if you find this uh, valuable, please share this. And uh, I'll see you in the third part of Introduction to Virtual Assistants. Thank you so much and um, stay awesome and keep hustling. Bye-bye.
Okay, so let's go to tools and software for virtual assistants. We do have um, three major tools and software that uh, virtual assistants commonly use. One is for project management. Um, these are project management tools like Trello, Asana, et cetera. And then uh, communication tools, this is also important. We have Slack, Zoom, um, just to mention a few. And also time tracking and invoicing tools. So for project management tools, I've in, we've included um, the, the logo for Trello here. Uh, Trello is a visual, if you haven't uh, done your research yet, or if uh, you're not familiar with Trello, you may want to check it in Google. They have also um, free training on Trello. So um, if you, uh, Trello is a visual task management tool using boards, lists, and cards. Uh, this is ideal for organizing tasks, setting priorities, and tracking progress. This is also um, ideal when collaborating with clients and team members by sharing boards. Next project management tool that uh, you have to be familiar as a virtual assistant is Asana. Um, my team and I always use Asana. I found it, uh, Asana or Asana, I found it uh, very user-friendly. They have also um, free, yeah, I think it's free for, um, they have a free feature for Asana, so you can try it out, um, uh, register for free, and then uh, try it out for your future clients. Robust project management software with task assignments, due dates, and project timelines. They also offer a variety of views, including list, board, and calendar. And uh, they help facilitate communication and task updates within projects. This is also a wide topic. Um, uh, we, we can also make um, in the future, hopefully we can make a training um, training material or training video about how to use Trello, how to use Asana, those um, or, or some other project management tools. So um, stay tuned and uh, watch for it. Next is um, monday.com. I, I, um, I'm pretty sure most of you heard about monday.com. So they are a customizable work operating system to manage tasks, projects, and workflows, and also a visual and interactive platform for collaboration, task tracking, and project planning. So this is their, um, their logo. Next is ClickUp. ClickUp is another comprehensive platform combining task management, docs, and goal tracking. It offers features like time tracking, integrations, and automations. Again, if you want to learn more about these project management tools, uh, do your own research, go to uh, YouTube or go to Google, and um, you really have to learn about these project management tools. Most of our clients are looking for someone who, who are at least aware or are knowledgeable not really expert, but at least knowledgeable of how to use these tools. Next is, um, what are the communication tools most commonly used in virtual assistants? First is Slack, real-time messaging platform for team communication and collaboration. So this is their logo. And uh, they also organize conversations in channels, share files, and integrate with various apps. Of course, um, I think we're all familiar with Zoom. We um, Zoom is the most commonly used uh, communication tool, not just in virtual assistants, but also in our professional work or in the office. So Zoom is a video conferencing and webinar platform for virtual meetings. It also um, offers screen sharing, breakout rooms, and recording capabilities. Next is Microsoft Teams. Okay, so collaboration, uh, Microsoft Teams is a collaboration hub within Microsoft 365 for chat, meetings, and file sharing. It also integrates seamlessly with other Microsoft tools. Of course, um, Google Meet is my favorite. 
we always use Google Meet, video conferencing solution integrated with Google Workspace, support secure videos, video calls, screen sharing, and recording. They are um, both user-friendly, but I like Google Meet better. If, um, again, uh, be proactive in um, learning more about these tools, these can, uh, these can really help you in your virtual assistant uh, career. Um, time tracking and invoicing tools. What are these? First is Toggle. Uh, my team uses Toggle. So simple time tracking tool to monitor work hours on tasks and uh, projects. This is also their logo. And uh, they generate reports for clients or personal analysis. Next is Harvest. Harvest is a time tracking and invoicing software with integration options. They also um, create automated invoice based on track time. Next is FreshBooks. FreshBooks is an accounting and invoicing software with time tracking and expense management. Um, it also generates professional invoices and accept online payments. Next is Wave. It's a free accounting and invoicing software for small businesses and freelancers. Also, um, it helps track time, creates invoices and manage expenses. Another important reason why you should learn about these tools, most of your clients, um, some of your clients will not be familiar with, um, with these helpful tools. So sometimes um, they will ask the agency or they will ask the virtual assistant. It would be, um, it would really be helpful for your clients if you know about these. Your client will, uh, will really admire you or will really, um, will really like you for, uh, for suggesting these helpful tools that can help their business too. Okay, file sharing and storage. So um, as a virtual assistant, is it, it's very important to, um, to know how to share your files and store your files too. So Google Drive is the most commonly used um, file sharing and storage, not just because it's free, but it's also user-friendly. It's a cloud-based storage for documents, spreadsheets, and files. Um, it collaborates in real time and share files with clients and colleagues. Dropbox, file hosting service uh, for secure storage and sharing files. It can easily share large files with clients and maintain organized folders. So again, Google Drive, familiarize yourself with Google Drive and also um, Dropbox. Okay, uh, moving on. So after the tools, and uh, those are just introduction of the tools and the software that um, a virtual assistant like you should be familiar. So um, if you want to learn more, you have, again, you have to be really proactive in learning those. And there are a lot of uh, tools and software that you have, you, that you can be familiar with. In our course, uh, we offer a very uh, wide list or a very long list of uh, those tools. So you may wanna check that out. Okay, um, ethics and confidentiality. This is really important, um, especially if you are, when you are a virtual assistant. Your client trusts you and uh, you are expected to be ethical when it comes to dealing with client. As a virtual assistant, you'll often uh, you'll often find yourself privy to sensitive information and entrusted with important tasks. It's important to uphold the highest ethical standards and prioritize client confidentiality. So, in this section or in this uh, lesson, let's explore the significance of these principles and how they form the foundation of a trusted virtual assistant client relationship. Why maintaining client confidentiality is important. First is trust building. Maintaining client confidentiality is a cornerstone of building trust. Clients need assurance that uh, their sensitive information, such as business strategies, financial data, or proprietary uh, processes will remain secure. As a business owner, it's very important to, um, to build trust. It's between you and, uh, and the client. 
Of course, uh, legal and ethical obligations. Many industries have legal requirements regarding data protection and confidentiality. Virtual assistants must comply with these regulations to avoid legal consequences. So uh, there will come a time some clients re will really require you to sign an NDA or um, non-disclosure agreement. Okay, and uh, those uh, non-disclosure agreement, once you sign it, it has legal impact if um, if you don't comply with the with the non-disclosure agreement. Importance of maintaining client also is maintaining clients uh, confidentiality is of course your reputation. Upholding confidentiality enhances your professional reputation. Clients are more likely to recommend your services and provide positive testimonials if they trust you with their confidential data. Handling sensitive information responsibility. Okay, um, so there are many factors when it comes to handling sensitive information uh, responsibly. They have what they call, what we call uh, data encryption and storage. So sometimes um, if you belong to a big company or if you're if you're in a in um, if you have a bigger business client, they have data encryption and storage. They implement robust, um, more robust security measures to protect their data, such as encryption and secure storage solutions. They ensure that access is restricted to authorized personnel only. And of course, uh, like I mentioned, the non-disclosure agreements or NDAs, um, consider using NDAs with clients to legally bind both parties to confidentiality. This adds an extra layer of protection. So familiarize yourself with NDA. Again, um, most clients require NDA. Uh, like, like our agency, whenever, um, whenever we hire a new virtual assistant, I require them to sign an NDA or non-disclosure agreement. Secure communication. Use secure communication channels and avoid discussing sensitive matters on unsecured platforms. Encourage clients to use encrypted communication tool. Data retention and disposal. Establish policies for the retention and secure disposal of client data when it's no longer needed. This prevents data breaches and ensures compliance with privacy regulations. Again, um, so data security is very wide topic as well. Uh, as I mentioned, this is just an introduction. At least you have an idea or um, for now, for now, you will have an idea that um, data security is also um, one of the important things that a virtual assistant must be aware of when um, when performing duties as uh, as a virtual assistant. So let's move on to continuous learning and professional development. As virtual assistant, staying updated with industry trends, mastering new tools, and enhancing your skills are pivotal to your success. We'll, uh, we'll delve into the practical aspects of staying current, including online courses, workshops, certifications, and leveraging the wealth of resources available to you. So um, as a virtual assistant, it is your responsibility to stay relevant, okay? Um, wag kang magpahuli sa mga bagong virtual assistant ngayon. To stay relevant, you have to be you have to stay updated with industry trends. If um, if you have just been doing administrative uh, tasks before, you might as well consider learning um, social media management, SEO, or search engine optimization, or um, or lead generation. So be proactive in learning. There are free courses out there that you can take. If um, um, if you are curious, if you join our Facebook group, I provided a long list of free courses. Those are free courses that um, virtual assistant can actually take. Okay, those are additional learning for you. You may not be able to get certificates for those, but uh, most of them also offer a certificate of completion. But um, 
uh, you can you can mention them in your um, in your resume or in your portfolio that you took um, you went to extra miles extra miles of uh, going and learning about a virtual assistant or virtual assistants. Okay, so again, uh, continuous learning and professional development is really important. Staying updated with industry trends and tools. Dynamic industry landscape. Um, the virtual assistant has a very dynamic industry landscape. It's, um, it's continually evolving with new technologies, tools, and trends. Staying current is essential to remain competitive. So before uh, copywriting, let's say, for example, in copywriting and content uh, creation, before we do we do content creation manually and copywriting manually, but again there comes uh, there came uh, Chat GPT, there came Jasper, or um, if I'm not mistaken, it's a uh, conversion.io something like that. So um, knowing those tools or knowing um, knowing the new tools or trends will uh, make you stay current. If um, some most of the clients now are now asking um, if you're familiar with ChatGPT, if you you've used uh, Jasper before, because it also helps their business. It it makes you more efficient and um, it will cost them less to um, to use those tools rather than um, rather than paying to uh, to copywriters. Okay. So another is market relevance. Clients seek virtual assistants who are knowledgeable about the latest industry developments. Being up-to-date demonstrates your commitment to providing valuable services. So uh, one of the common questions, um, halimbawa mag apply as virtual assistants. As a virtual assistant, one common question is, how are you, um, how do you stay relevant? with uh, new technologies, tools, and trends. So you have to be able to answer that question, okay? Next is tool proficiency. As virtual assistants, proficiency in the latest productivity tools, project management software, and communication platforms is crucial. Um, clients expect efficiency and expertise in these areas. The, the tools that I mentioned earlier, like project management software, Asana, Monday.com, um, clients are expecting you to, to have um, at least knowledge, if not expertise in those areas, okay? So networking opportunities. Engaging in industry events um, is another way to, um, to stay relevant and also to, to grow your knowledge. Engaging in industry events, webinars, and online forum allows you to connect with peers, share insights, and learn from other um, experiences, okay? All right, so um, online courses, workshops, and certifications. So again, um, we do have online courses. Offer we offer online courses. Um, again, um, it's very affordable. We've um, it's it's crafted by a real virtual assistant agency based here in Canada. So we know we know both sides. We know what client needs, and we know what um, what 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 should a virtual assistant uh, really learn? Really should learn before um, before before really or so that uh, he or she will become an effective virtual assistant, okay? So skill enhancement, enrolling in online courses and workshops helps you enhance your skill set. You can learn new skills or deepen existing ones, such as um, there are courses for time management, uh, communication courses or communication skills enhancement, or specialized virtual assistant skills like um, if you want to become an e-commerce virtual assistant, um, we're developing this course. It's a specialized course for e-commerce virtual assistant only. And also we're developing a course right now for social media virtual assistant too. Certifications. 
um, earning relevant certifications such as certified virtual assistant or project management certificates adds credibility to your profile and reassures clients of your expertise. We have, um, like I mentioned earlier, we have this uh, list of free courses. It's free. You just have to sign up and then um, it will be sent to your email. It's a whole list of um, all free courses that you can take as a virtual assistant. And um, we do have a lot of project management courses there. And again, it's free. So flexible learning, online courses and workshops offer, offer flexibility, allowing you to learn at your own pace and fit professional development into your schedule. Specialization, some courses offer opportunities to specialize in areas like social media management, email marketing, or e-commerce support, enabling you to target specific client needs. Cost-effective learning. Online courses often uh, cost less than uh, traditional in-person training. So online courses, um, so uh, in-person training, making professional development accessible to a broader audience. Napakabihira na lang ng umaaten ng mga in-person training. I think uh, most courses nowadays are are offered um, online. Okay. Resource availability. The internet provides a wealth of free resources, including webinars, tutorials, and blogs to keep you informed about industry trends and best practices. I think um, nowadays, in, in the, with the power of internet, I don't think uh, meron pang dahilan para hindi ka matuto on your own pace, at your own way. So it's just a matter of um, really being proactive finding the right um, information and also finding uh, finding the right resources, where to find it and uh, finding valuable resources, not just any resources, okay? So, um, wag tayong masasilaw sa mga murang courses pero hindi naman makakatulong sa'yo or hindi naman siya valuable, okay? Um, tinipid mo nga yung sarili mo but still, um, wala ka namang natutunan and hindi naman siya relevant dun sa... Um, Sa, sa goal mo na matuto ka about virtual assistance. So it's really up to you, okay? But uh, one thing is for sure, resources are always available. Internet is there. It's just a matter for you to, um, to find the right resources. Okay, uh, scaling your virtual assistance business. So um, as you gain experience and grow in your role, Mas, marami ka ng experience, marami ka ng naging clients, you'll inevitably reach a point where you consider expanding your operations. So good job, um, dumami na ang client mo, marami ka ng experience. So you're now thinking of expanding or scaling your virtual assistant business. Scaling involves strategic decisions that can lead to increased productivity, revenue, and impact. So in this segment, uh, we'll explore two key aspects of scaling, hiring additional assistants. So uh, that I think is a point that you really need to hire or outsource another help or another virtual assistant to support your workload and expanding your services to attract a broader uh, client base. Hiring additional assistants. Um, meron akong mga nababasa na nagpo-post na I really need uh, someone na makakapag-assist sa akin. So they came to a point na uh, sobrang dami na nilang task and um, uh, kaya na nilang mag-outsource, i-outsourcing services or kaya na nilang um, humanap ng assistance. Next is delegating task. As your workload grows, hiring additional virtual assistants can help you delegate tasks and responsibilities freeing up your time for higher level work, okay? So, um, merong time na darating na hindi ka na lang kailangan mag-administrative work or mag-social media management. There will come a time na uh, mas high level na ang, ang pwede mong gawin. You can be a project manager or you can be a, a recruiter. So, so yun, yung mga uh, magiging, magiging progress mo from uh, being, a, being a virtual assistant 
um, to project manager, and then after project manager, pero pwede ka na rin maging operations manager. Okay? Next is specialization. Consider hiring assistants with um, specialized skills or in specific niches to offer a broader range of services to clients. So um, kapag nag-hire ka naman, um, consider then yung specialization nila. Does it match with uh, what the client needs or um, does it match with the specific niche of the client? So um, i-consider mo rin ang specialization nila. Training and onboarding. Um, this is to ensure a smooth integration process by providing comprehensive training and clear onboarding procedures for new team members. Kapag um, hindi ka nalang virtual assistant, when you need to outsource or when you need help, you have to know how to train and onboard them effectively and efficiently. Okay? Client management. Delegate client management tasks to assistants while you focus on uh, strategic client relationships and business development. Okay, so expanding your um, next topic is expanding your services and uh, client base. Service diversification. So again, uh, from administrative tasks, like social media, kana, and then you learn um, more about graphic design, and then after graphic design, the curious ka about writing content. So you became a blogger or copywriter, and then after copywriter, you decided na oy marunong ka palang mag, ano, mag uh, search engine optimization. And then uh, since my background ka in graphic design, you also learned how to web or design a website or web designing. So those are example of diversification. You explore new service offerings within your expertise to meet a wider range of client needs. It's not just um, client needs, but also more profit for you as a virtual assistant, since um, the more skills you have, the more profit you will have. So for example, if you've been focused on administrative tasks, like I said earlier, consider adding social media management or content writing services. So yun na yung uh, magiging um, uh, steps mo towards um, success and higher higher income. Targeting new niches, niches. So before you're just um, appointment setter, administrative task, data entry. Now um, target mo naman ang ibang niche. Gusto mo nang uh, mag content uh, content creation or even even all types of content creation. Okay, so identify and tap niches or industries that could benefit from your virtual assistant services. Tailor your marketing efforts to these sectors. So kung ang, um, kung ang target mo are real estate business, you have to tailor your, uh, your services based on what are, what are the needs of a real estate business. Okay, marketing and branding. When you're expanding your services and uh, when you're expanding your client base, marketing and branding are really important. Invest in marketing strategies to reach a broader audience, like uh, updating your website, creating compelling content, uh, create contents, and then uh, utilize social media to attract new clients. So going back to our um, uh, lesson about social media, so this is this is actually part of marketing and branding by utilizing or optimizing your social media profiles and website. Next is networking and partnerships. Lagi natin sinasabi, networking, partnership, um, relate, building relationship. These are very important when you're a virtual assistant. You build partnerships with other businesses. Kasi referral yan eh. Pwede, pwede silang mag-refer sa'yo, pwede ka nilang um, i-refer sa ibang businesses na kakilala nila na another business din. Okay? Agencies or professionals to expand your client network and tap into their client base. Okay? So um, I think that's, uh, that's it for our introduction to virtual assistants. Um, I really appreciate your time. So thank you for listening and always reach out for any questions. Um, our email address is, in, is info at virtualforestaffing.com. So this is the screen that I actually want to share with you. 
Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach us uh, to reach to us at um, info at virtualforestaffing.com. And uh, if you're a business owner right now who is in need of a virtual assistant, so feel free to um, go to our website. It's actually in our Facebook page. Just uh, click the link there in our bio, in our Instagram, in our TikTok account, in LinkedIn account. We have um, we we ask a certain question here. Are you ready to hire a VA today? And then um, you have to answer this questionnaire. So again, um, we also have a, um, a link for all our services here. And if you're ready to become a virtual assistant, which is what this training is for, you have to, um, you can check our affordable virtual assistant courses crafted by a real virtual assistant agency. 